But this is a really exceptional situation. I can't think of any situation where, that I've heard like this in all of the nearly 20 years that I've been practicing maritime law. An American couple vanished at sea. Now three escaped prisoners are charged in their murders. I think it's pretty obvious what happened. I think there was going to be clear evidence at the scene, including bloodstains. So the chances for this couple are extremely slim. I hate to say it, but I think that's the, that's the truth. As long crime first reported, 71-year-old Kathy Brandle and her husband, 66-year-old Ralph Hendry, were last seen on February 18th. The couple, who were married for 27 years, sold their Falls Church, Virginia home back in 2013 and made their new home this yacht. They named it Simplicity. Kathy had retired from her career as a real estate agent and Ralph worked from their yacht as a financial advisor. The pair were last seen aboard Simplicity by a neighbor at a dock in Granada. After that, all communication was cut off. Investigators say a group of escaped prisoners hijacked the catamaran and likely threw the couple overboard. They're now presumed to be dead and their accused killers have been charged with murder. To understand the legal aspects of a crime committed at sea, we spoke to Maritime Attorney Michael Winkleman. This is an awful story. I mean, as soon as I read it, I was heartbroken. Being a native Miami, and I'm very familiar with the yachting and the yachting industry, and being a maritime attorney, I'm even more familiar with it. So really, it's it's my universe, and I can only imagine the, the lives and the quality of life that this couple had, and for it to be taken away so shockingly is really just just awful. While the bodies of Kathy and Ralph have not been recovered, Winkleman says it's likely they were killed in the incident. So right now this couple is presumed dead. I'm wondering if there's any possibility that they could be found down the line. I mean, the ocean's a pretty big place. What is the likelihood of that? Uh, unfortunately, I would say it's basically zero. I mean, I've handled a number of cases over the years involving cruise ship passengers who've gone overboard. And the percentage of passengers who are actually found once they go overboard, it's infinitesimally small. And if they are found, it's usually within a window of a few hours. So the chances for this couple are extremely slim. I hate to say it, but I think that's the, that's the truth. Three men are now accused in their murders. 19-year-old Trayvon Robertson, who was unemployed at the time of the crime. 25-year-old farmer Abita Stanslaus and 30-year-old sailor Ron Mitchell. According to authorities, all three men are from St. Andrew and had been arrested back in December in connection to a violent robbery case. Mitchell also faced additional charges of rape and attempted rape. The three men escaped from prison on February 18th, the last day Kathy and Ralph were seen. Investigators say their boat was found on February 21st, about 80 miles from where it was last seen. Aboard, the ship had been ransacked and there was a red substance that appeared to be blood. So investigators finally do catch up with the boat. I'm wondering what the first steps would look like with that. Well, that's a good question. I, I think it, this, I don't think this was necessarily a very difficult case to investigate or to win a trial. I think it's pretty obvious what happened. I think there was going to be clear evidence at the scene, including bloodstains. I think it was more of a, uh, that they were lucky to have, have actually uh, captured these three gentlemen. And now they're behind bars. All three suspects were also taken into custody on February 21st and cooperated with authorities. On February 26th, they appeared in St. Vincent Court, pleading guilty to immigration-related charges. More than a week later, the pair were hit with additional charges, including capital murder, escaping lawful custody, housebreaking, robbery, and kidnapping. So I think the prosecution part of it will be easy, what I think will be interesting is whether or not there will be any kind of extradition to the United States. Granada does have an extradition agreement with the United States. So I know if this were my family and this happened, or this were, you know, my parents, uh, I would certainly want them back, brought back to the United States to be tried in U.S. courts. I have a lot of familiarity with courts all over the world being a maritime attorney and I'll never say anything ill about another court system, but I will say that the American court system is the best in the world. And I think that's true from both a civil perspective and a criminal perspective. So I would hope that ultimately these three criminals are brought to justice in the United States. If we're looking at that extradition, how would that work getting these three people back to the states? I'm sure there's some sort of process with it. Absolutely. Extradition is an extremely complicated process, involves a heck of a lot of negotiation. I think in this type of a situation, particularly where I think the media is doing a nice job of covering the story and doing a real benefit and solid to the family, I think that because of that increased focus on it, I think it'll make it easier to the extent that the U.S. is looking to bring to extradite these criminals back to the United States. But for now, there's no real timetable for when the suspects could be seen in the United States.
it's also my experience that the wheels of justice turn slowly in America. And it's even more my experience that the wheels of justice turn even slower in foreign jurisdictions. So it's hard for me to uh, to talk about a, a specific timeline for this case. I do know that to the extent the family is likely pushing very hard on its local authorities, whether it's their senator or congressman or something that um, someone of that ilk to be pushing for extradition. The timeline on that, it's hard to say. It is a very complicated process. Generally speaking, it's a timely process, but I would cross my fingers that they're brought to the U.S. ultimately to be tried and convicted. As to where the suspects would be extradited to in the states, Winkleman says that's where things get complicated. But in my experience, my guess would be it would be either where they were from, if they were residents of a certain place. That gets a little tricky, though, because obviously then now they were basically living abroad. So it's not an easy question. I'm certain the Southern District of Florida would be happy to take the case because it's high profile and frankly, because I think it's a bit of a slam dunk. Winkleman says jurisdiction gets more tricky because Ralph and Kathy owned and lived on their yacht. But when a crime is committed against a passenger that is from the United States, then the FBI does have jurisdiction not only to investigate, but also to um, try and potentially convict the uh, person who's been accused. So that's unique from this because these were people who obviously lived on the, a yacht that they owned. You don't have that same uh, federal law that applies. So it sounds to me from your description there that it kind of depends on the situation where this would head to court, whether the people are American citizens, where exactly it happened. Is all of that correct? Absolutely. I, I mean, being a lawyer, I, my general answer is always is it depends. And with maritime law, it's even more unique because you're talking about uh, you could be a U.S. citizen. You're on a ship that flies foreign flags. So you may be on a ship that, strictly speaking, let's say you're in Panama or the Bahamas. You could also have law that applies related to the jurisdiction where you're in. So let's say you're in port in Europe, you could have European authorities that were involved. So when you're talking about maritime law, you often, if not invariably, have the interplay of multiple law enforcement agencies that are able to investigate and have some involvement. In this case, Winkleman says the couple was likely ambushed in the night, so their defenses were down. Well, again, I would guess that they were docked and they were probably sleeping. So I think that made it much more difficult for them to defend themselves. If you were talking about a situation where they're actually at sea, it's almost like you're talking more about piracy. And all of the boaters that I know, and I know a lot of avid boaters, including people who live aboard their vessel, they're, they're armed at sea. And I think that's a good idea. And I think, boy, whether or not you'd have standard ground laws would depend on where you were at, what location you were. But I know if it was me as an attorney and I'm living on a vessel for a period of time, I'm certainly going to have the appropriate defenses in place to be able to protect myself and my family. But if there are other people out there who, in their retirement, want to live in a yacht, sell their home similar to this couple that did here, and are sailing around the world, are there any sort of precautions they should take or anything they should pay attention to as far as jurisdiction, things like that? I think that's a great question. And I, and I think really it depends on where you are. And as wonderful as the Caribbean is, and there's some wonderful places throughout the Caribbean, there's a lot of places that are known to be dangerous, particularly the Bahamas. Frankly, I don't, I don't know Grenada to be a particularly dangerous place, but clearly this has proven it to be different. But I think you really need to be aware of your surroundings and where you're at. And also, I would assume they were docked in a marina, and marinas aren't necessarily particularly secure locations. They're easy to get to. So if you're living aboard a yacht, Perhaps it's safer if you're not going to be, if you're in any kind of a place where you think you're in any kind of a danger and you're docked, go back out to sea, anchor down there, sleep overnight there. I think that would increase your chances of, of staying safe. But this is a really exceptional situation. I can't think of any situation where that I've heard like this in all of the nearly 20 years that I've been practicing maritime law. Winkleman says there are security systems available for private boats, but it's unclear whether Ralph and Kathy had one aboard the Simplicity. And for others who find themselves in international waters, Winkleman says there are ways to stay safe. A lot of our viewing audience, they may not have a yacht and be sailing around the world, but a lot of people do go aboard cruise ships and use that as their vacation. Is there anything that they should be keeping in mind as far as maritime law or safety? That's a great question. And, and I always say step one is don't leave, don't leave your common sense at the port. Bring that with you on the ship. I think a lot of cruise ship passengers think when they're on a cruise ship, they're in this isolated little bubble that's 100% safe. Meanwhile, there is a very high amount of crimes that happen at sea, in particular rapes and sexual assaults. I often say it's a hidden epidemic. But I think what's key is when you're going on a cruise ship, you have to treat it like you're going to New York City or Boston or Miami, any other big city. 
can't let your kids roam free, then you gotta take those extra steps to keep your family safe. All three suspects appeared in court on Thursday and will be held in prison awaiting their next appearance on March 27th. Reporting for Long Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.